Sandy dunes, wooden houses, savage Indians, and rebellious cowboys. These are just some of the things that come to mind when we think of the Wild West. But to what extent are these myths and associations with the American frontier true? In actuality, not a lot. Despite its common misconceptions, there are many fascinating factoids and exciting events that took place during America's infant years. I'm Jake the Voice Pirate, and these are 10 facts you probably didn't know about the Wild West. Bank robbers Tom McCarthy and Butch Cassidy both successfully robbed a bank in 1889 with minimal effort, and were given a hefty $21,000 in the process, which is worth over $300,000 today. McCarthy brought with him a small bottle of the powerful liquid explosive nitroglycerin. A bottle of the stuff could produce a large explosion. McCarthy held the bottle in his hand and called out, If I drop this, we'll all be blown to the next state. After receiving the money, the outlaws tossed the bottle into a nearby bin and made a hasty retreat. Turns out the liquid was nothing more than harmless water. Denizens of the Wild West had such nasty teeth that they refused to smile for family photos. Their choppers were rotten or stained brown thanks to excess tobacco and coffee consumption. It was the cowboys who made more of an attempt at cleaning their mouths by chewing on twigs. After the toothbrush was invented and mass-produced in 1857, some public eating places and stagecoach stations offered a free brush that visitors could use between them on a first-come, first-served basis. Since people did not have an understanding of germs and bacteria at the time, it only made their mouths filthier. One of the earliest toothpaste recipes to be introduced to the Wild West was a concoction of sugar, butter, and breadcrumbs, which only rotted their teeth even more. Still... At least it was tasty. What would you consider to be an act of bravery? Rescuing people in danger? Fighting on the front lines for one's country? Or poking a dead person with a stick? Surprisingly enough, the Native Americans believed in the latter. They would usually take a special coop stick whenever they engaged in battle. Touching a freshly slain enemy with it was impressive, but poking someone who was alive and living to tell the tale was deemed courageous. That is, as long as someone could confirm to their elders that it happened. It was very risky. They could easily have been shot or cut down. Warriors were often rewarded with eagle feathers for their headdresses. It was not for fashion. They were cut or dyed in certain ways to inform their fellow tribesmen whether they killed an enemy, were injured in battle, successfully scalped a foe, and so on. Towns of the Wild West did indeed have tight gun control. Usually, a weapon was purchased for self-defense against bandits, Indians, and for hunting. To draw in travelers and tourists, the sheriff made sure their towns were safe for all. Visitors had to relinquish their guns or just leave them at home. Duels, however tense, were rare. Often, these were conjured up by braggers and novelists trying to reel in tourists with cheap, exciting, and purely fictional tales. You've seen them in films, TV shows, and video games countless times. Snug, comfy homes of the West made entirely of wood, surrounded by wooden fences, and so on. This depiction is historically inaccurate since wood was actually very difficult to acquire. When the settlers began to start a new life in the vast, uninhabited lands of America, the most common resource to construct houses with, making homes with bricks of grassy mud was very cheap and fairly effective, though it didn't withstand heavy rain particularly well. In any case, these were known as sod houses. You can probably imagine keeping them clean must have been a nightmare. When it comes to Western outlaws, few are unaware of the name Billy the Kid, real name William H. Bonney. Most people don't seem to realize that his legacy was posthumously built upon a lot of exaggeration and misconception. One of the most popular myths about Bonnie was that he killed a total of 21 people when he was 21 years old, including his very own mother at age 12, and even a man at a hotel for snoring too loud. These are all incorrect. His mother died of tuberculosis when he was 12. As for the people he killed, two were in self-defense, and another two was during his escape from jail. The snoring victim was a made-up tale, and besides, he died at age 21. Where did all these myths come from? After Bonnie was shot and killed in 1881, Sheriff Pat Garrett of Lincoln County in New Mexico teamed up with ghostwriter Marshall Ashman to work on a biography called The Authentic Life of Billy the Kid. It sold poorly on release and was pretty boring, so they decided to spice it up by portraying him as a bloodthirsty killer in later editions. Not so authentic as they made it out to be. Riding on horseback was an effective way of traversing the American frontier quickly. 
The muddy, sandy land was also home to a different kind of four-legged creature, though, camels. The US Congress decided to put $30,000 towards the shipping of camels from Egypt to America in 1885. After all, camels could handle the heat very well and did not need to drink as much water to remain hydrated, in comparison to horses. Two years later, the army had about 70 camels at their disposal. When war broke out, some escaped and bred. Others were killed on the battlefield. You might have spotted the occasional feral camel lurking around, however, they died out for good around 90 years later. What we think of cowboys, images that come to mind include handsome rebels fending off countless bad guys with their trusty six-shooters. And who could forget their famous piece of headgear, the synonymous cowboy hat. In truth, most cowboys weren't Caucasian. They were usually Mexican or freed slaves. Their headgear was usually a simple black bowler hat. Their jobs consisted of transporting large quantities of cattle to different settlements around the country, and nothing more. While they were armed, it was mostly for self-defense. Riding around for hours upon hours on horseback daily was boring, uncomfortable, and for meager pay. Perhaps Hollywood was right to have shown us anything but the boring reality of being a full-time cowboy. Do you believe in extraterrestrial life? Or does the idea of space saucers crash landing in 1947 sound like a farcical, overblown hoax? Strangely enough, there were reports of encounters with spaceships and unknown creatures predating the iconic Roswell incident by 50 years. In 1896, three slender, seven feet tall creatures were reported to have attempted to abduct Carmel Spooner and Colonel H.G. Shaw from Lodi, California. According to Shaw's report, he spotted a 150-foot long ship. They claimed to have fended off the attackers and that the three unknown figures, quote, walked rapidly towards the ship, not as you or I walk, but with a swaying motion and disappeared. A spooky encounter or a snake in the boots of truth? You decide. One does feel sorry for women who force themselves into a life of vice in order to survive in society. Conversely, prostitutes of the Wild West were actually some of the richest people around. These working girls popularized makeup, socially drinking and dancing, legal use of contraception, and more. Unlike most women who are unable to work, acquire any sort of health insurance, or divorce lovers, prostitutes had all of these things. They even hired policemen as muscle against violent customers or lovers. In fact, some were so rich, they put some of their funding towards road building projects and irrigation. The working girls of the Wild West were by no means slaves, as some feminist historians may argue. You could say that they changed American society for the better. Outside the line of work, of course. Those then are 10 facts you probably didn't know about the Wild West. For more top lists just like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to check out our other top lists. Thank you very much for watching, and thanks for learning.